First of all, a big thank you to Therese Pilati, Dan Barnes, and Alan Moore for sharing my videos on Facebook. I'm really flattered and I take that as a huge compliment, thank you. Well, as some of you know, we're just now coming out of the Great Recession, and none of us escaped that time unchanged. The Great Recession marked the beginning of the post-scarcity economy that we're living in right now. The shift happened long before the Great Recession, when Reagan broke the air traffic controller strike in the 80s and tilted the economic scales in favor of business at the expense of labor, right? Business took notice and quickly eliminated their high-wage employees by pushing out unions. My own father was one of those businesses in the 80s that reduced costs by eliminating unions. He wasn't a heartless tactician, he was an entrepreneur trying to grow his business. I know that he took those additional profits and used them to buy new equipment and new technology that allowed him to go from employing 15 people in the 1980s to 130 people in 2011. I remember specifically a conversation I had with my dad in 2005. He had a big purchase to make and he had two choices. Choice one, buy an injector that would increase production, reduce costs, and grow his business. And choice two, buy a Ferrari so he could look cool to his friends and show off. Do you know what he bought? The injector. It was not the sexy choice, but a couple years later, that decision let him go from two shifts to three and provided 32 more jobs in our local community. Most business owners are not the problem. That's what I'm getting at here. The system in place is the problem. My dad is a smart guy. He adapted to survive, just like we're adapting to survive in today's economy. What the president and my dad missed was this was a short-term strategy for growth. Eliminating these high-wage employees also eliminated high-wage consumers from the economic system. How is that a short-term strategy, right? Reagan grew the economy like a weed, and my dad got to take his business from two shifts to three. The problem with that is our whole economy is based on consumption and debt, not business growth, right? If you listen to politicians today, it's all about business growth. Prosper as a nation of small businesses, reinvest in, we need to grow our small businesses in order to uh, Main Street America, all full of shit. The real driver of this economy is consumer spending. We, as the consumer, have all the power in today's economy because without our spending, there is no growth. The economy, in a super simplified version, looks something like this. We are the 99%, right? This is our households. We spend money by giving it to businesses, and they give us products and services back into our household. They also give us wages into our house. These wages turn around and go back into the company, right? So the company doesn't just give all of its value right back to the consumer, they make a little bit of a profit margin, okay? We're gonna call this profit margin. But what are they doing with that profit margin right now? And this is where we start to have a problem, right? So they're taking this money that we have right here, and they're not putting it back to households, they're putting it all the way over here in China, India, who knows where else, right? And they're removing money from this system. So this money and wages is no longer all coming back to us. It's going tax-free offshore to other countries. How's that helping our economy? It's not. Huge corporations parking billions of untaxed dollars overseas are not driving growth. They're suffocating it by taking money out of the circle, right? Me and you spend all of our money in the circle, and it's free to move it around and around until Apple gets a hold of it, or Google gets a hold of it, or General Electric gets a hold of it, and parks it in a foreign country tax-free. So if you reduce our wages, you also reduce our consumption because we don't have any money to spend. So what do we do? We cut back. We only replace two tires on our car instead of four. We switch from eating beef to chicken, we get rid of cable, we move across the country to reduce the fixed cost of living. If you're part of the 99%, you've been getting pretty creative over the last few years in order to get by. Now is not the time to whine about taxes, the fight for 15, or even the election. That whole system is and we all know it. We just don't have a better idea yet, right? Now it's time to get even more creative and consider not what's going wrong, but what we can make go right. What we can do right is our own life and our own finances. This little tiny circle right here is what we can do right. Start thinking about your household like a business. Start running your household like a business. And ultimately, 
Start your own freaking business. So today's business model is broken. Where can we find a new one? Well, I don't have a new one. I have an old one. I look to our founding fathers. Everyone agrees our founding fathers were badasses. They made stuff. They published revolutionary documents. They kicked the most powerful government in the teeth. And then through a tea party that will go down as the most influential rager in history. But how were these early Americans making a living? They were homesteading for basic needs and building home-based network businesses like sawmills, blacksmith shops, and butcher shops. That's what a cottage industry looks like, people. Homestead plus cottage industry equals revolutionary forefathers. If our forefathers could build this country on a simple economic system, who's to say that we can't do the same? Business used to be about supporting a family and a community, not about rewarding shareholders every three months. So, I'm starting my metal fabrication shop just like my forefathers started blacksmith shops. Just like my grandpa Virgil started a butcher shop in 1959. Just like you can start if you learn how to focus your time and resources. But I'm not talking about just doing it. I'm actually doing it, right? I'm doing it today. I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it by making 100 YouTube videos about this process of starting my own cottage industry, MakerTable.com. My hope is that you learn enough to start your own cottage industry to provide for your own family and your own community. So the next videos I release are gonna be more business education than business promotion. I wanna be less Tony Robbins and more Richard Simmons in these videos. Tony Robbins is a motivational speaker, right? He pushes people from behind with psychological dribble. While Richard Simmons stands in front, arms waving, yelling, let me see you sweat, people, right? So, we're gonna cover some sweaty topics, like general and administrative costs, debt, cash flow, infrastructure spending, profit and loss, risk management, and a bunch more. I'll share my experiences from corporate business all the way to union construction to get you thinking like a business and ultimately acting like a business. I'm not saying I have all the answers. I'm not a successful millionaire or a self-help guru. What I am saying is I have a willingness to figure this out and share what I find. So subscribe to my channel, share my videos, like me on Facebook, but most importantly, watch my videos so you can learn how to survive in today's economy.